An important part of the conservation story in the United States is the National Wildlife Refuge System. A far-flung collection of lands and waters selected for their value for migratory birds and rare mammals. The system contains over 350 refuges, totaling 30 million acres. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service of the Department of the Interior administrate the scheme. It recognize that secure habitats for many kinds of wildlife are far from adequate. New areas are needed to provide natural environments for birds and mammals in danger of extinction from increasing human pressures. The National Bison Range in western Montana protects the most important of the remaining herds of American bison or buffalo. On this refuge, in the beautiful Flathead Valley, land of the Shining Mountains, roam 500 of the great shaggy creatures. In the early 1800s, great herds wandered the prairies and contained perhaps 60 million animals. Over the next 80 years began the slaughter of big game such as the world had never seen. Millions of these great beasts were shot, stripped of their hides, and the carcasses left to rot in the prairie sun. Many Indian tribes were decimated as their main food source was wantonly destroyed by the white man. By 1900, only 20 wild bison were known to exist. Fortunately, there were a few privately owned, pitiful remnants of the once majestic hordes. From these scattered bands, the National Bison Herd was started. The refuge also contained small herds of other mammals, notably that most magnificent of hat racks, the elk. Found mainly in the Douglas fir, ponderosa pine forested areas, these Rocky Mountain Elk were introduced from Idaho and Wyoming back in 1916. The Big Sky Country of Montana is also the setting for the Nine Pipe Refuge. Built as an irrigation reservoir for the Kootenai Indians, it provides a rich feeding and nesting habitat for many varieties of waterfowl. The great blue heron. The common American coot. Up to some fishy business, the western grebe. Canada geese use the reserve as a resting place along their migration route. The only true North American native mammal is the pronghorn antelope. Originating from a deer-like creature of the Miocene age, they share some of the features of the goat and the antelope of other continents. Preferring the higher and rockier parts of the reserve, the extremely hardy bighorn sheep. Nature's ability at camouflage is the only defense they have in their mountain fortress.
one area that has kept the advances of mankind at bay is the desert. But man's greed for gold was to make inroads even into the Kofa Mountains, from which this reserve gets its name. Kofa is a contraction of King of Arizona, one of the richest gold mines which operated here in the first ten years of the century. Even now, one still wonders at the powers of endurance of the early settlers who crossed this barren region that seems only to be inhabited by reptiles. There is, however, enough plant life and water to support the desert bighorn sheep and the desert mule deer. Though the larger mammals keep themselves to the most rugged parts of the reserve, there are smaller creatures to be found around the water holes, like cottontail rabbits and Yuma antelope squirrels. morning doves enjoying the last rays of sunshine with lizards who just seem too lazy to catch insects. desert is adaptable and can during the year boast more greenery than many a polluted city street. From behind its prickly thorns the cactus in all its varieties is the rose of the desert. The Kofa reserve spreads over a thousand square miles and for true isolation and solitude it can be awe-inspiring. The sun dips down behind the mountain ranges and even the sky reflects the color of the desert. Plants and animals can rest to build up natural reserves to cope with the scorching rays of the morrow. North to Alaska. Not always a region of snow and ice, but one of lush greenery, where the cottonwood tree creates its own blizzard. And the bald eagle makes his nest. Of all the American states, Alaska can claim several firsts. In addition to its size, the oil and gas and mineral resources, fishing and timber, it has more bald eagles than all the other states combined. Next to these resources, how much is a bald eagle worth? Well, the answer lies in values measured by standards other than economics. 
Selected by Congress in 1782, the bald eagle is the national emblem of America and is valued for its symbolic significance in history as well as for its biological role in nature. With its eight-foot wingspan, the bald eagle glides around with just the occasional and almost nonchalant flap of the wings. No small wonder that the Indians have always treated the eagles with great reverence, and that the feathers are kept for ceremonial purposes and are regarded as big medicine. Accessibility of Alaska has been the wildlife's greatest safeguard. But the advent of the aircraft, now coupled with the 20th century oil rush, has increased the danger to the environment. Though the mountains retain their snow coverings, the southern coastal strip benefits from a surprisingly mild climate. Temperatures rarely fall to zero, and in summer they're often up in the 80s. On the Kenai Peninsula Reserve of southwest Alaska, there's yet another variety of sheep. Smaller than their southern counterparts, the Dowell sheep live on a diet of alpine plants and seldom weigh more than 200 pounds. In past years, the ram has been a prized hunting trophy for its curled horns and beautiful white coat. The most outstanding creature of the Kenai Reserve is the moose. It's the largest antlered deer on earth, with a bull moose often weighing over 1,400 pounds. Calves are usually born between May and June and are soon able to keep up with their high-stepping parents, running through the swampy woodlands. Amongst their diet of birch, willow and aspen leaves, the moose likes nothing better than to feast on some of the aquatic plants of the mountain streams. It's amazing the length of time a moose can keep her head underwater just munching and munching. The moose's ungainly and almost prehistoric features give you the feeling that this strangely handsome animal must have been designed by a committee. Certainly much more graceful than Trumpeter Swan. Graceful? The ugly duckling syndrome is just one of the many problems of growing up.
once considered near extinction, the trumpeter swans are now on the increase. The reserves are not only important to the residents, but to the many migratory waterfowl that are completely dependent upon Alaska's islands. For Alaska is the focal point for birds of three continents, the terminus of migrations which may have started in Argentina, Tasmania, South China, Hudson Bay or Siberia. After journeying, birds seek places to nest in a country unchanged by man and to rest and forage in water still unpolluted. There's one bird, the dipper, who likes to go foraging underwater. The dipper builds a nest of bracken and moss on a ledge above the river's spring flood level. There's always the exhausting task of feeding her ever-demanding youngsters. Unlike many parents, she doesn't have to teach the chicks to become house trained. Thirty miles south of the main Alaskan peninsula lies Kodiak Island, the natural habitat of the famed Kodiak bear, and just teeming with salmon waiting to be fished. In fact, it's a real teddy bear's picnic. The salmon are coming upstream to spawn and die, and it's easy for the bears to pounce on the fish already weakened by the efforts of swimming upriver. They catch the salmon by pinning them to the stream bed with the long claws of their forefeet. Biologists estimate that over 2,500 of these tremendous animals inhabit Kodiak Island. With all that free food about, it's no wonder. Bears normally avoid contact with man, fleeing even when confronted inadvertently. Nevertheless, these are large and powerful wild animals and can stand over eight feet tall. Any experienced backwoodsman will warn you to keep clear especially when there are young cubs about. insatiable curiosity of the young with an innocence soon to be lost. In southeast Georgia, near the boundary with Florida, is one of the most primitive swamps in America, the Okefenokee. Established in 1937, the Okefenokee National Refuge stretches over 400,000 acres and attempts to protect the fragile strands of wildlife against the encroachment of urban development. More than that, it sets out to prove that conservation isn't just for the animals, it's for people too. For even humans need to get away from the hurly-burly world to find an awareness in the pleasures of our own environment. The Okefenokee is actually a vast peat bog, 
unique in geologic origin and history. Once a part of the ocean, it remains as a saucer-shaped depression 100 feet above sea level. Self-preservation, the innocent becomes the hunted. It's the law of the wild, where even the most venomous of enemies can be outwitted. If the visitor is to see a good representation of animal life, the use of food to attract the creatures from the dense forest enables man to watch and gently interpret nature without crashing around the reserve, perhaps unknowingly destroying all that he set out to observe. This works two ways, and in our overindulgent society, the animals soon get to know their way around. Here's one raccoon that really lives off the fat of the land. To enjoy the beauties of the swamp, the best way to travel is by boat. The inky black waters of the Okefenokee move slowly, oozing their way through the tangled forest of cypress trees hung with streamers of Spanish moss, eventually flowing out into the Gulf of Mexico. The Fish and Wildlife Service plan no development that could mar the attractions of the swamp. Nature is her own landscaper. Already new trees grow to hide the stumps left by loggers who even tried to drain the region to facilitate the removal of timber. They must have been brave men. Who would even dare to disturb that other resident of the swamp? Moving cautiously past these sleeping old gentlemen, you have to remember that alligators can run as fast as a man and fully grown reach a length of 15 feet. A female alligator will lay about 60 eggs, so it's hardly surprising that the steadily mounting alligator population is past the 10,000 mark. Treated with respect, alligators will not attack man. But if you were to let a dog loose, you'd soon find out why there aren't any dogs barking around the shores of the Okefenokee. Okefenokee is truly a magnificent wildlife refuge, but it's much more. It represents an attempt to hold the treasures of nature in trust for all people.
fish or fishermen. All have their problems. A great deal of natural habitat and many species of wildlife have already disappeared. Let us hope that future generations will be grateful for the conservation of the wildlife that still inhabits the earth.